statement of Ethan Nestor Darling regarding his strange experience in his friend's basement. Original statement given December 18th, 2019. Audio recording by Jonathan Sin, head archivist of the Magnus Institute, London. I don't know how this happened. I, I know what happened, but we never meant to do this. You see, my friend Mark and I have a YouTube channel together. We don't really have a concept for it. We do random shit and delete the whole thing in a year. Well, that was the plan until recently. Mark and his girlfriend Amy had the idea that I explore their basement. Of course I didn't have a problem with it. Go down there, act like some spooky stuff is going on, and that's it. Well, it would have been fun if my acting wouldn't have turned into actual terror. We started filming when we were testing our walkie-talkies, since we were to communicate through them. Everything was working fine. I was set up with a night vision camera, a GoPro, and the walkie-talkie. So I make my way downstairs, telling some random jokes, but then things started to get a little weird. You have to know, Mark and I were only separated by a normal wood trapdoor, so there shouldn't have been any problems with us communicating. Nonetheless, when I turned on the walkie-talkie, I didn't hear Mark's voice. Instead, the thing started screeching. All I was able to hear was static and screaming, screeching. That didn't last long though, and soon enough Mark's voice came through. Of course I was confused, but I tried to play it off, believing it was just a defect in the device. Of course I asked Mark if he heard anything similar, but he said no. Casually, I continued to investigate. I finally decided to turn on the light, just to give myself an overview. To say I was surprised when it actually turned on would be an understatement. The basement looked... Well, how you would imagine a basement. A lot of unused equipment was sprawled out. It was very cramped. I looked down and noticed a hollow space underneath, well, the house. The joy about the basement light was short. It died like five minutes after I turned it on. But it didn't just fade to darkness. The light bulb exploded. Of course I jumped. Of course I did. I just stared at the now empty slot when Mark's glitchy voice called out to me. When I wanted to answer, I once again heard the screeching. Well, at that point, I was a little freaked out, and I wanted Mark to hear those odd sounds. So I climbed back upstairs and... well, nothing. Everything sounded normal, just like when we were testing it. At that opportunity, I mentioned the hollow space underneath his house. He just looked at me, surprised. He told me that there were devices to notify him in case of an earthquake installed in all corners underneath the house. But that wouldn't explain why the whole space was hollow. Finally, I agreed to crawl into the space. Fucking stupid idea, I know. But what could possibly happen, right? Apparently more than I thought. I was crouching down when Mark reached out to me and said that his dogs were behaving weirdly. Chica and Henry are normally more quiet, so it was weird that they were barking and whining at the basement door. Nonetheless, I proceeded to crawl under the house. At first everything looked normal, so I proceeded to go deeper. The walkie-talkie started screeching again when I spotted something. I couldn't really see, maybe that's a good thing, because, well, through the night vision camera it looked like a, a hand, just a cut off hand, only a few feet in front of my face. I shrieked, flinched and smashed my head against the wood. Dizziness took over for some seconds before the walkie talkie started again. This time, I wouldn't even hear Mark's voice through the, well, I wouldn't call it interference, but I don't know how else to describe it. 
Believe me when I say that it sounded like multiple people screaming. Anyway, I got out of there, actually calling for Mark, but no one answered. I just heard the dogs barking, whining and running around. God, it was so dark. Like, not normal dark. Literally all I was able to see was black. I suppose how a blind person sees. Trying to get out of there, I tried climbing the ladder, but it seemed like it was gone. <laughs> it was like the already cramped basement turned into a into a, a box, almost. And I was a mime, acting like I was trapped. Except I really was trapped. That's when I really panicked, screaming for Mok to let me out. Instead of an answer, I just heard trampling. It was so loud. It even drowned out the screeching from the walkie-talkie. I didn't know how to react. Frozen with fear, I just waited for what happened next. The dust coming from the ceiling made me cough. Well, and then the door opened. <laughs> And what I saw was indescribable for me. I saw what should have been Mark, but it wasn't him. His face was stone cold, and his skin looked like he was a porcelain doll. His eyes were empty and glassy, but I think the absolute worst was, well, the rest. There was a huge hole in his throat, and thousands of cracks spread from there. Besides those cracks, there were bugs crawling out of that hole. Especially really pitch black worms. I swear, they were coming out of his mouth and ears as well. And that's where I passed out. I woke up in a hospital bed. My girlfriend Mika told me I had a concussion and a crack on the back of my head got infected because wood got stuck in there. Well, I haven't seen Mark since that day and I can't really say I've tried to contact him. I have left the walkie-talkie and camera here since I was told you guys investigate this stuff. Maybe I should try to contact Mark again. I have a bad feeling with all of this. Statement ends. I fully believe that Mr. Nestor may have hallucinated his encounter with his friend as a porcelain doll full of bugs. His hospital records state that he had a mild to severe concussion. Additionally, his skin looked like he went into an allergic shock, according to the doctors who treated him, possibly caused by the amount of dust he breathed in. Martin has reviewed the footage on the night vision camera, but just as Mr. Nestor stated, Everything was just pitch black. Only the sound of Nestor's breathing was audibly. The walkie-talkie, on the other hand, worked just fine. End recording.